Love, um, an organization based in the U.S. that um, is dedicated to provide solar um, energy, solar lamps, to um, those in need in the Philippines and elsewhere in the world. We got the opportunity to travel um, to Eden Island and see some of the um, poverty and um, uh, living conditions in, in that area, and it really tugged on our heartstrings. Um, and we were very interested to find out that some of the very few uh, commodities that they have um, is this wonderful plant, um, as, well, as well as other plants that, um, that grow there. But Moringa is really a personal interest of mine um, because of this. And we are dedicated to providing livelihood for um, some of the Filipino people um, that really need it, and educating um, Filipinos on Moringa. So I, uh, I am a naturopathic physician in the United States, um, as and this may be similar to some of the alternative practitioners that you have here in the Phil Philippines. Uh, we have gained quite a bit of recognition in the United States recently, and uh, we have 18 states out of the 50 that license naturopathic physicians. We are um, work closely with other conventional medical doctors, and in Washington State, we are licensed as primary care physicians, so we, um, we our scope of practice is quite similar to a regular conventional doctor which is very nice. We get to blend the two um, and use the best of, of both methods of, of medicine. Um, and I also do regulatory consulting for a consulting firm in the United States. Uh, I have been doing dietary ingredient research for, for quite some time now, 15 plus years. And it, I'm not doing research in a laboratory um, like uh, Dr. Fahey. Uh, I don't do that kind of research, but I do um, research the publicly available information um, out there in the, in the domain and provide critical assessments of, of that material, um, particularly on, on safety of, of dietary ingredients and also um, uh, efficacy as well. So a lot of uh, interest here, I know, in the U.S. market, and um, I think, you know, rightfully so, the U.S. is one of the largest markets of dietary supplements and ingredients in the world. Uh, even in our recovering economy in 2010, sales of dietary supplements reached uh, approximately $28 billion in the U.S. And functional foods, which is not a, a, a defined term in, in regulatory uh, means, but foods that are incorporating dietary ingredients, uh, foods and beverages that are incorporating dietary ingredients, also grew at 37.4 billion in 2010 in the United States. So we have started seeing Moringa products in the United States. Um, Moringa does not have a distinct regulatory status in the United States, and I won't go into that because it's a whole a whole other talk. <laughs> um, there are different regulatory uh, statuses that ingredients can have in the United States, and it doesn't necessarily have a distinct one. But many other companies selling it um, are stating that it's generally recognized as safe for grass, and that's um, primarily because of the length of the history of consumption um, here in the Philippines and other countries. Um, so, Moringa products in the U.S. have included drinks, um, energy bars recently, um, and a lot of supplements are being sold on the internet as well. The U.S. regulatory environment is quite complex and, and not, it's uh, not very well understood even in the U.S. Um, different, you know, in comparison to the Philippines and many other countries, we don't register our dietary supplements with the FDA. And so, um, Many think that sub dietary supplements are, are not regulated. And that's, you know, simply couldn't, couldn't be farther from the truth. There's a lot of regulatory um, uh, rules around dietary supplements. And um, again, it, it's, very, it's quite complex. Um, in the US, dietary supplements fall under the umbrella of food. And 
we have a Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994 that set out different regulations for um, dietary supplements compared to conventional foods. Although the US FDA doesn't require that you register a product um, with the FDA, they do require that foreign domestic and foreign companies that manufacture, distribute, or package dietary supplements to register with the FDA. Um, this was set under a, a Public Health Security and Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act, and um, FDA must also be given advance notice of shipments um, that are coming into the uh, U.S. Recently, President Obama in 2011 signed the Food Modernization Safety, Safety Act, which is one, they call it the most sweeping reform of food safety law. So the U.S. is becoming quite aware that, that we need to increase our food safety um, rules and regulations. So they just require a little bit more now from facilities, even if they are foreign. Um, you do have to renew your registration every two years. Uh, the FDA, will, you have to sign insurance that the FDA can come and visit your uh, facility if they think that there is reason for, for your products causing harm. I think one of the biggest problems um, and concerns that the FDA has in the U.S. is on um, good manufacturing practices. Um, the head of the Dietary Supplement Division of the FDA has stated that it, this is his main focus. So they are really trying to, to make the FDA more of a proactive organization rather than a reactive organization that they've been in the past. So the good manufacturing practices, again, it applies whether you're domestic or foreign. Um, and I think that's you know, uh, uh, an issue when, when um, in a lot of different countries, not necessarily only in the Philippines, but um, some, some safety standards need to be put into place. Uh, we require in our GMP rules that standard operating procedures um, are, are, are done and documented. So many doc there's many documented procedures that need to happen, whether it's training your personnel, um, your physical plant, equipment, cleaning and sterilizing, all of this needs to be documented. And if you are registered with, with the FDA, they would require to, to see that. Um, and also the issue also is, is quality control, and that goes along with, with good manufacturing practices, specifications, which are standards for identity, purity, strength, and composition, and limits on contaminants, whether it be microbial or heavy metal or pesticide contaminants. Um, certificate of analysis, or is there something that's done on every batch of herbal product? and those have to meet the, the established specifications. Um, and I think um, that's where, you know, again, a lot of foreign countries, is, and, is, and especially the foreign Philippines, um, should be focused on, because we need that safety, we need that assurance um, for, um, you know, the industry to, to be able to, to um, focus on exporting to different countries, and not only the U.S., but I know Japan and, and many other industries require the same safety standards. There's also a push in the industry recently to require fingerprinting of herbal products, um, making sure that the product that you say is, is Moringa oleifera is actually Moringa oleifera. This is not quite a, a regulation yet, um, and I'd be interested. I'm interested to hear what Dr. Fahey has. Um, research into the compounds and, and seeing what we can, um, how we can identify Moringa oleifera a little bit um, better. So again, the need um, that, that many industries need in many countries require, including the, the uh, US FDA, is quality control, um, standard operating procedures, and, and general, uh, good manufacturing practices. So I encourage uh, the farmers and and manufacturers to um, reach high and, and look into these regulations and, and strive for um, this, this type of safety. Um, and I also encourage uh, everybody to um, support more research on Moringa. Um, any, any, any type of safety, toxicological or human 
studies are well welcomed um, and they only provide the, the more support um, for Marina's uh, health benefits. So thank you again for having me. It's been a pleasure and um, have a great conference.